Welcome back, ladies and gentlemen, to the Creator Clash, where we had 16 of the best Magic players all battling out in the new format, Timeless, to try and get themselves into the top four. And we are now here in our top four players. That means we have got two more rounds of Magic before we crown ourselves a champion. Of course, my name is Will Hall, better known on the internet as Will Hall AXP. That there, that is Anarik Das, and we bring you all these events. I hope you're enjoying this as much as we are. Let's talk about these decks, Anu. We have got four players, but realistically only two decks left standing. And they're pretty good ones, right? They are very good ones, and they're very cool ones, too. We've got to watch both of these decks throughout the day. So the first deck is Blue Black Demir Control. We got to watch Mistman dance a delicate dance against uh, Mono Green Primetime, uh, sneaking a win here by looping Aether Gust and, uh, what is it, Commit, I believe, uh, you know, to stop Primeval Titan that could not be countered from coming into play. You can see cool cards here like Bind to Secrecy, which uh, we saw actually used by Mistman to defeat Reed Duke, conjuring up a 2-2 bat in order to cross the finish line there. Arnie also playing a very similar list with a couple differences. I think Arnie also has things like Snapcaster Mage, but we can talk about that uh, in, in momentarily. Uh, on the other side of the table, the other deck that we have here is Rakdos Breach. Now, this is a deck that I think is particularly amazing. It, it plays some of the most broken cards in the format, but effectively this is an Underworld Breach Tendrils of Agony Storm deck that leverages Dark Ritual to generate obscene amounts of mana. And then I guess the uh, the timeless uh, route to generating Storm, which is through Stitcher Supplier and Diabolic Intent. So this is a pretty cool deck as well. Uh, Nathan won as fast as turn three, I believe, in one of the matches that we actually got to watch. And uh, I, I'm pretty stoked about it. Well, we actually worked out a really cool fact, right, about this Breach deck that we've got a load of data that we've collected from all 16 players and their decks. And the top 10 most played cards in this tournament are all in that Rakdos list. All 10 Crazy. of them. All 10 of the most played cards in this whole tournament are in that Rakdos list. But turns out red and black cards are really good. Who would have thought? Yeah, I uh, and so we'll go over that list real quick here. Will you have it in front of you? Uh, can you just read it top to bottom so that yeah. so, so and and th this is important piece of information before we even get into the cards. Why is this important? So it can tell you it can tell you a if you're trying to build some of these decks or if you want to pick up some of these cards on arena. What should you spend your wild cards on? Right already, I can tell you, Orcish Bowmasters is probably the first card that you want to be crafting. B, it also tells you what the metagame is centered around, how to build into the metagame, or how to attack the metagame. So, Will, what are the 10 cards that we're looking at? Well, in first place with 48 copies is Orcish Bowmaster. Nothing, we didn't know that. Surprise. Second, Death Rite Shaman, 41 copies. And the next one, this is the fetch you want to be, uh, you know, using your precious wild cards on. It is Polluted Delta, 39 copies. Fatal Push is number four, the powerful removal spell with 35 copies. Then the next fetch land you want to be uh, you know, crafting is Bloodstained Mine. No surprise if Rakdos has uh, put two copies into our top four. Then it is Lightning Bolt with 31 copies. Seventh place, Ragavan, probably the second most powerful one drop in uh, Timeless, calling it. Then number eight, we've got Fort Seas, 29 copies. This one's quite interesting. Nine, swamp. Basic Swamp, don't need to craft that one, get on the free. 25 copies, but interesting that that is the ninth most played card. Maybe, you know, black cards tend to be the more powerful ones here in the timeless format. And then finishing off the last fetch you want to be doing is Wooded Foothills, 25 copies. So from that, free fetch lands in the top 10. Gives you a good inkling of what sort of colors people are leaning towards. If you've got a good strategy to build them, maybe that's how you want to be attacking the meta. If you, you know, because wild cards are really precious on arena. That's, you know, Especially if you're free to play and you've got a grind to try and get them, you want to make sure you get the most out of all your wild cards. Well, that is the top 10 of this format. I do want to go through our notable ones, though. You know, some powerful cards and where they kind of came in this tournament. Dark Ritual, number 20. It was the 20th most played card. Or Oko, the 28th most played card. Uh, most played card. Swords to Plowshare, arguably one of the best one mana removal spells in Magic the Gathering. 35th place. The One Ring, really good in modern. 50 52nd place in our tournament and then Uro 54th place and the last card I've got here I had to notable mention it because I'm a big Dungeons and Dragons fan Minx Gamboo 59th place 
And that's you know, I have 16 content creators all coming out from different angles, deciding if they want to go aggro, control, mid-range, using their favorite color combinations, trusting out what is good. All those cards that I just named are really good in their own aspect, but how do they come together and build the 60-card decks that we've seen today? Turns out Rakdos and uh, Black cards are really, really good in that. Yeah, and I think that's what we're going to see just moving forward. And you could probably also drill down on like the core principles and tenets of why these are so successful, right? The the number one thing that shouts out to me first about Orcish Bowmasters, right, is that it it is disruption in multiple forms, right? It pings one ones, which generally when you have cheaper cost creatures, they have a one toughness like Raghavan, for example. Yeah. It also is very disruptive against some of the most important cards in the format, like Brainstorm, right? Or or not important but some of those powerful other cards that draw cards and get you through like fable of the mirror breaker for example or even just like random utilities like a uh, archmage charm drawing two or minsk and boo ticking down to fling a hamster right orcish bow masters has just shown itself to be maybe the most powerful card of 2023 and it's making an impact in timeless as well the other card that really struck out to me as as very important was you know like you mentioned death right shaman as well right and the the principle behind this is that it's just so flexible so a lot of things to learn from this a has it gives you options the card having three very good options on the card harkened as the one mana planeswalker from way back in the day so you want that flexibility b of the three options the most important one imo is its ability to generate mana so it allows you to ramp from turn one uh to having one mana to three on on turn two just accelerating that curve makes all of your stronger cards a bit easier to cast which is also very important you could even see like in in i guess the rakdos deck technically it's a sideboard card that is how powerful it is uh just being able to to give this combo deck a little bit of flexibility here and there um i think that's kind of important but like we're talking about like overarching principles and how you may want to build your timeless deck to see the most success right and then another card that I thought was particularly interesting was Dark Ritual. This is a card that just flat out generates mana. And if we're saying Death Rite is great for accelerating your curve, Dark Ritual does this twice as effectively. Uh, so that, that one is also another one on my radar uh, for, for power level. I think my and... Okay, all right. Looks like Will is dipping in and out. So yeah, I think I think that's going to be uh, what the core tenants, at least, of what I'm thinking about. Now, the next thing is on the other side of the table, we have this blue black uh, control deck, right? And honestly, I think the other thing that I'm slowly realizing is that Timeless is a format here. You can see Miss Min's deck. Timeless is a format where. While the threats are very, very powerful, um, the developers of this format did a great job in making sure that the answers are just as, if not slightly more powerful, which is fantastic because this gives you the opportunity to play extended games where there's a lot of back and forth uh, uh, resources, exchanges, things like that, where draws actually matter. This is your de facto control deck as of, as of now with, I mean, almost a million counter spells, if, if I can count correctly, right? One, two, three, a million. Okay, perfect. Um, what is interesting about this deck is that it does play Orcish Bowmasters, but it doesn't really leverage a card like Lures of the Dream Den in the ways that I would really expect. So, for example, the only card I think you could actually buy back is Orcish Bowmasters, if I am not mistaken. Oh, you also have Mistress Bobble as well. Okay, so that's another thing too, right? With Lurus of the Dream Den being able to generate advantage for how much mana every turn? Zero? Sign me up, right? Core principles. Just keep these notes in mind when you're building your own deck. Um I think this is going to be pretty exciting. I know for our first match, Jordan, let me know if we're almost good to go or not. Um, looks like we may need a little bit more time. The first match is going to be, I believe, Elliot Dragon against Arne uh, Hushenbeth. And Arne has lost already to Elliot Dragon, Elliot in, in the last round of Swiss. So this is, in fact, that's right. Ding, ding, ding. It's a grudge match. And I kind of, you know, I love these because this is a moment where Arne gets to say, like, hey, that was a fluke. I'm going to beat you when it actually counts. Or maybe Elliot just puts his foot down and says, you know, be gone. Uh, now, this is something that I also kind of want to ask Pat about, is your opinions on um, who you think is going to win this matchup? Is it going to be the control deck or is it going to be the combo deck? Do you like, like, and also what has to kind of happen here, right? So for example, how good is turn one Raghavan uh, from, from the Rakdos side of things? Uh, and then how good is a card like Dark Ritual in the face of multiple counter walls and things like that? Keeping in mind, Elliot, you know, being the 5-0 seed, first place, does get to choose play or draw in our top four. Uh, and yeah, that's that's uh, how it's going to be. 
That's pretty, pretty big, right? Being, being played your I'm back now, by the way. Thank you for, for covering that and storing a little bit. You can take a breath, my friend. But yeah, uh, going back on that, why I think Death Right Shaman is the second most played is it's got that two toughness. It lines up really well against Orcus Bowmaster. I have, I've been dying to say that. I couldn't because the internet died that way. It's all good. We're good to go, ladies and gentlemen. We're just queuing up our feature match now. So it is none other than our 5 0 Elliot Dragon versus Ani Who Spoke, who is an absolute dominant pair. These players, they play a lot in Europe against each other. Now they're doing it here in the content creator over here in a timeless format. Who have you got? Let's get your ones in chat for Elliot, two for Arnie. Does your allegiance lie to control uh, to control, or does it lie to the combo deck? Ones for Elliot, two for Arnie's. Let's see, where are we going as we're going to kick off our top four here in the content creators clash? I added an extra one there. I wanted another C in there so that, you know, to make it good. We've got a lot of twos, a lot of ones coming up now. We always get the, the generic threes because you know, we've got some funny people in chat, so I love to see it. Let's get the ones and twos as we're going to get this match on the way. We're giving the cue to the players down in the feature match that they are good to start when they like. Notably, all four decks playing Lurus, right? Super, super powerful card. Yeah, this is something that I've noticed too, is just that Lurus um, is able to generate weight advantages that like no other card really can because it is a sustained source of advantage. It's an engine, right? And the, the, the reality is, is also the cards that you're bringing back are just so, so powerful that you really cannot um, be upset uh, with the quality of this card. So I'm not surprised to see four copies of Luris in the top four of this event here. Uh, you know, the best decks by the best players in, I am mean, arguably the, the best arena format. Now that I've got to watch a couple of matches, I'm, I'm, a, I'm, a, I'm pretty excited here. Uh, we're going to see both players, I believe, uh, definitely yeah, Elliot took a mulligan, right? Yeah, Elliot, Elliot to the Mulligan, he's probably about to take another as well, because I don't really like this hand. No uh, colored mana sources in it. Obviously, we're going to have to do our best of how well we know card arts, because it's all in French, because Elliot is, of course, the French powerhouse. Coming here, we've got Arnie who's here from Germany. So two Europeans going head-to-head -head here. I imagine I'll be seeing them both the end of this month uh, at the uh, regional championships that we've got going on. And, um, yeah, I think we're going to get another mole down to five here for, for Elliot. Yeah, unfortunately, not having access to a red source here is a little bit, uh, it is not great. And, and and even if it wasn't a red source, just not having a second land, no real way to sort of access your uh, the rest of your deck. I think it makes sense in this position to, to take the mulligan. And it's, it's not great, but I'd much rather have a functional hand than anything else. This one has a copy of Underworld Breach and Dark Rachel, so you're basically almost there. Yeah, I'm gonna, if you can, Jordan, if you can swap it around so we have, the, uh, we have Arnie. Uh, that we can see from his state because then we've got English on all the cards for people uh, at home so they can uh, kind of keep up with it. I apologize for any French, uh, you know, natives in the, the chat. We, I'm, I'm trying to make it user friendly for everybody, but unless, uh, yeah, yeah, we're going to keep it like this for a little bit until we get it fully swapped over on the other end. We get a good look at what's going on and from uh, Arnie's perspective here. So, um, kind of, it's what you want to see when you go to the top four, right? When your opponents already beat you once, you kind of like seeing it when they mow down to five cards. Yeah, exactly. And, and this is a deck that is very, very good at sort of um, taking an advantage and running away with it. It's not really great at closing games out, but the reason that it doesn't need to is because you're just going to be so ahead on resources that it, it just quite frankly doesn't even uh, matter, so to say, that uh, you know your opponent uh, um, is still alive because they're functionally, they're, they're basically just in the Shadow Realm as they play. So so I, I, I'm not surprised to see this. The quality of Arnie's hand currently not, Arnie's hand is not that great, uh, only because of these double Fatal Pushes. But, you know, Fatal Push in some capacity is necessary, and you also have the Brainstorm to put them back into the deck should you decide that you don't need it. Yeah, you know, obviously don't we need the fetch land. If we can find a fetch land in our top three, that'd be ideal. We can shuffle them away. Uh, we don't see an early explosive start here. Um, for Elliot, I'm just having a look. We do have the the Ragavans and stuff. Let's have a little look. See, yeah, Ragavan, Bowmaster, and then Dragon's Race Channelers are the reasons that you don't want to instantly ship back the Fatal Pushes. However, um, long, long term, once you get to like the tenth turn, for example, it is possible that not having something like a counter spell over the Fatal Push could be costly. So we'll see. Honestly, the best place for a card like Fatal Push might even just be like the graveyard where you can access it with Snapcaster Mage, where you can access it with Mystic Sanctuary, but not necessarily need to, to clog up one of your seven special slots in the hand. Hey, I'm, I'm just looking over Alex Dex. This is obviously the first time we're getting to feature him. He's got four Ragavans. They're in the cyborg. 
<laughs> what? 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 What's going on here? Like, I more strategy. love that. Earlier this week, I made a tweet saying, I really don't think Raghavan is it in this format. And when you look at the most played card, Orcish Bowmasters, it kind of makes sense, right? The story adds up. The math checks out. There's also so many ways to mitigate the card like Raghavan, whether it is blocking you with a Deathrite Shaman or even like a Kami of Bamboo Groves or just, you know, like putting a 3-3 three, three in the way of it, right? It's a card that doesn't scale very well. So so Elliot sort of making this realization that, hey, it's probably better in the sideboard more than anywhere else is very keen, smart. I like it a lot. Yeah, look, the math checks out. He is literally undefeated so far in our creative clash. Just um, we, we see hitting, you know, trying to get some value, hitting the Lewis in hand, but here comes Crux. So this is the late game. This is this is genuinely one of my favorite cards as well. I like this card a lot and how it kind of pans out. So we may need to discard a card. Uh, if it is a non-land card, we don't take any damage. If it is a land card, we're going to take them damage. Of course, we've got this Fatal Push. We can just get that out of here. That's not really going to be too good right now. We'll be really good when the Crux comes back out of the graveyard. But that, you know, we've got a little bit of time before that happens. As we see the Sons Ransom uh, now being cast. I believe we've we swapped him over now. Now we are seeing it from Arnie's point of view at the bottom of your screen. And we moved Elliot to the top. Elliot on All right. five. So it looks like Sauron's Ransom here, Drown in the Lock, and Fatal Push are being revealed. Uh, I would honestly just take these. Okay, this is the Counterspell in the mix as well. All right, so no matter what, it looks like um, Arne is guaranteed to get a single Counterspell, whether it is Drown in the Lock or actual Counterspell. Um, and I think that's more than you can really ask for here. Let's see. Let's see how this goes here. I mean, I, I really think this is cunning to put the Counterspell alongside the Polluted Delta only because. Um, you know, it always it might feel like you can do better than just a land sometimes, and uh, that might be what gets you to get rid of the better counter spell in the situation. I think like drown the lock too. Like technically, like if you play underworld breach and escape your entire graveyard away, it gets a little bit worse. But then again, everything on in Elliot's deck probably has mana value two or less because of Lurus, right? So it might just be a wash, anyways. Well, he's really, really in a tank here about that, and that, that's what he decided to go with. He just wants to draw. He knows he's got an answer to this Lewis in hand with the Solden scoring. We can count with that. It's never, it is never touching this battlefield one way or another, unless it, you know, maybe I suppose that maybe an underworld breach could end up bringing it back later on. But uh, definitely, we're setting up for that big turn where Elliot decides that he wants to go for the win, or at least get a big value breach out of there. We're setting up our hand so we can kind of stop that in the bud, not give him any value, and then potentially try and win the game out from there once he's uh, used all of his resources. Uh, really looking forward to how this one pans out. I think we're just going to get this bit of stalemate from both players until one person potentially pulls the trigger. But that mole for Elliot down to five means he is going to be two cards down the whole time, which might really play in the advantage of Arnie. Yeah, and what really matters here, the way you break out of this from the control perspective is just do one very simple trick. And this is going to frustrate everybody. Um, what is it like that? That what that one trick that uh, X, X person hits or whatever? Just play land drops. That's all I'm trying to say here, right? The more land drops that Arne is able to make, the better this this game is going to be for for him because then you get to cast more counter spells. Um, in theory, what Elliot may just end up doing is solidly nothing for many, many, many turns. And the reason that might be the plan here is because eventually Arne is going to have to discard, right? And so it's a weird balance here. The problem is, is like the longer you let the game go, the more counter spells you know, uh, are, the blue black player is going to be able to find. Uh, but you also want to make sure that you don't just completely get swarmed by, um, you know, the, the, the shield, the, the counter wall, yeah. if you will. Which we're building up nicely, right? We've got someone's going, we've got Snapcast Damage, we've got Drown in the Locks, we've got actual hard counter spell, Bowmaster, Soren's Ransom, plus more land drops if we need to, which we know how good Mystic Sanctuary can be, as we've seen that cast already, hitting the um, the Soren's uh, Ransom to the top of our deck. And now look, we're going to start firing this off now. Here comes the Orcus Bowmaster, end of turn. We're going to start applying a little bit of pressure, kind of pit that. Uh, Elliot to the test, like, you know, you can start deploying some of these spells, my friend, and really, see, this August Bowmaster isn't my game plan, it's just, it's a nice bit part of my game plan that I can deploy it, get a bit of chip damage in when needs be, as, uh, looks like Sons Ransom with Snapcast a land, given the, okay, now we're going back and forth, we're having a little look-see. This is hard, this, man. How is this such this? a cunning card, right? Because, like, Every single card there is is honestly really good. Even even the redundant lands is good in like the long term here for for Arne. So you, you really have to find a way to like trick Arne into 
like taking the wrong pile. But then, you know, it's also what kind of information can you glean from what, what RNA is picking here, right? Like if he's saying snap up, I'll take up this counter spell instantly, you know, then it's like, okay, well, this is the clue that I know about this. This is the clue that I know about that. This is not a very easy card to play around and with. So I, I am kind of curious to see what like the ramifications are here. And at, at this stage, I, I think, you know, with what one, two, the stern scolding as well as a counter spell, you have a snapcaster mage. You're looking for what, at least eight mana in play to go counter, counter, snap, counter. I'm, I'm, I'm like thinking the longer this game goes as well, right? The more uh, Sons Ransom we cast, the better. Because we see there, temptation counters going up. At the minute, we've got a 1-1 with two counters on it. That means every time we attack, we get a loot effect. But not only that, if we can get that, if we can max out and get it to four, every single time our temptation, tempted creature does damage, that's an extra four damage. Oh, maybe it's three damage. Three or four damage coming across. That in itself could just be a threat. And that's just, we're just doing our game plan, turning and burning through it. Thank you, Mr. Uh, Gavin C for the raid there. Welcome all the raiders. Hope you had a great day today, watching some timeless content. It's been an absolute blast so far, and we are in to the top four. We started with 16 content creators, and we are down to the last four, but there can only be one, just like Highlander, and we're going to work out who that is. It could be Elliot Dragon at the top of your screen here, undefeated at this point with the Raktos Breach deck. Already taking a game off our, our, our match off Arnie at the bottom of your screen here on this Demir control deck. But there's four players, but only two decks left. And we've got both of them playing out right now. We need to know where your allegiance lies. Are you going to be with the control deck, Arnie, at the bottom of your screen? Or are you going to be with Elliot at the top? Let us know in chat. We need to know how it's going to be panning out because uh, we're sitting in for a long one here. We're sitting in for a long one, I think. Yeah, I... I have to say, the way this game has played out, it does seem like Arne is playing very, very disciplined, very, very well. Um, and has also just put him in a self, put him in a position where, like, I, I, I don't think he can really, like, there's no, I, I, I don't know what has to happen here for Elliot in order to win. I think the actual answer is going to be Elliot's going to need to find mo uh, multiple copies of discard spells and then um, chain them all kind of in the same turn. So, so a great parallel to sort of explain what I'm talking about here. Back in the day, Storm in Legacy, um, you know, had a really hard time with the de facto control deck. It was called Miracles. I played Sensei's Divining Top and Counterbalance, and the Storm players, being the sickos that they are, love them to death. They <laughs> created a strategy um, that is from an even older time, from before I started playing. It's called Grinding Station, basically. And 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 the idea behind that was just like you'd effectively just like mill your opponent out by by doing not too much. I think that's correct. Like literally based off the card Grinding Station, which does you know mill um, certain things here and there. Um, but the idea is that you just play a very 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 long game of magic and the way you win is you use your opponent's counter spells to generate storm for you so you'd start off the fight with something like thoughtsies into okay they counter then you play another thoughtsies and then they counter then you go dark, dark ritual into thoughtsies and at that point it's just like the storm is already seven so you don't even have to like play your tutor you just go like you know you don't have to play like underworld breach you can literally just go like tendrils of agony for lethal things like that right so that's kind of how i expect this game to go if elliot is supposed to make a underdog comeback here but it's all up in the air right now whether or not you know elliot's going to get those pieces hey i just learned something i just learned if you steal your opponent's creature that's got a temptation counter on it uh it loses a temptation counter i never knew that and Does now i do back at the end when do you give it back i'll tell you momentarily <laughs> 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 but we, that is the first time we've seen claim the firstborn uh being cast in this tournament where well, i remember when we yesterday when we were going through the deck list and getting all the data from it as soon as i saw that card in this deck i went oh he's playing racto sacrifice that's easy and then you're like no 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 well we, look at the cards look at the guy he's a breach deck i was like ah oh, okay so you know what I mean? don't, don't judge a book by its uh it's it's cover. I am interested to see now if this temptation counter comes back or not. I'm gonna say no, and I'm right for a change. Yeah, let's go. So it doesn't come back. So that's a a nice little interaction that I've learned, and I hope uh, you know maybe a few more people in chat have learned it as well. Let's see. Have a little look at our graveyard. What have we gone through so far? Of course, we've got access to them all with these snapcasters in hand. One of the you know, this does, card doesn't see enough play anymore, in my opinion. I used to love this card back in the day, and you know I'm not really a blue mage, but this card is it's really cool, right? The, is, is this the first invitational card, or was there one before this? Um, I think there were many, many more before this. Uh, so, for example, Avalanche Riders uh, by Olrod, or was it was Olrod Sylvan Safekeeper? Avalanche Riders was someone else. My bad. 
Uh, that one, yeah. no. That one, no. But 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 yeah, like uh, like meddling mage, um, avalanche riders, Sylvan safekeepers. Yeah, I, I actually, that's a good point. Tannen, Tannen, bringing it up. Um, Snapcaster mage wasn't the first. Uh, it, Will was the last one. So you, you were close. You were close. But uh... <laughs> it just got my audio wrong. It's fine. It's classic Will. It's classic Will. <laughs> Dyslexic is is a thing. Chat. It's fine. It's all good. We're all good. Oh, we're getting bombed. Okay, yeah, I remember there was like a weird history thing too about like what came first. So Avalanche Riders was the first printed invitational card. And then fun fact, I think Sylvan Safekeeper was the first like invitational card that was won. So Olrad won, but then they didn't make his invitational card until much later. And this is where it gets a little bit crazy. You might notice in the artwork for Sylvan Safekeeper that like it's got the character has gorgeous blonde hair. Um, So I think Ole shaved his head and at and you know the time that they the art that they based it off was him when he won the card where he had you know where he wasn't bald so i, I don't know I, I i this is fun trivia to me i hope maybe you know chat learned and enjoyed something but uh uh the timeline is all sorts of wonky here well what, what we've seen is basically lurus is being cast we saw it counted with a drown in the locks and now end of turn we're seeing snapcaster into the son's ransom so not only are we apply more pressure to the battlefield we are also applying more cards to our hand and this temptation is going to go up to number three number the chapter number three not too relevant in constructed it means if this card is blocked the your opponent has to sacrifice the creature that or creatures that block it uh, not too worried about it, but we do continue this loot effect we can pick you know some of the good cards in our hand and get rid of the bad ones more importantly it's, it's this pressure we're, we're able to do now free damage a turn this is pretty big but elliot is only going to have three cards in hand but remember there is a crux in the graveyard there is an underworld breach in hand there is a uh, dark ritual so could have a really super explosive turn but we know you know the double counter spell in hand plus snapcaster is probably not going to turn out well for him and potentially will be going to a game two momentarily but none of these two decks don't win very quickly when it's not a combo element involved. Yeah, one thing that I was going to say was I was kind of hoping that uh, Arne would just like flash in double ambush viper, uh, swing with five, untap, swing with five again, and then uh, just play Luris, buyback Orcish Bowmasters for lethal. Uh, you just have so much counter magic in your hand right now. And with, with uh, Elliot on very few resources, it just seems to me like, um, you know, we have the opportunity here to end the game a turn sooner with little risk but then again that's also that you know that's also kind of uh you have to sort of evaluate yourself like hey can't am i allowed to take this risk here and arna says hey i can't lose so i might as well just play it super safe so it, it goes both ways i suppose yeah i, I like another counter spell off the top with memory lapse but yeah this game is all but locked up here as five damage comes across Drops Elliot down to three. We're going to bubble. We're going to get information. It is an Inquisition off top. That's fine. We've got enough mana up to just counter spell that. Plus everything else as another Sons Ransom, which would give us the fourth temptation uh, level that we need to be able to do the extra damage. I'm half inclined to go, yeah, sure, take whatever. Still got all Ds. Still got oh. all Ds. I totally forgot about that, right? Sons Ransom is another win condition in the Mistman deck, right? Yeah, yeah. I guess it, that, that on on the one one uh, token or whatever token or whatever creature you choose, if you can get it to level four, it in itself turns it to a full win con. But we are going to see Arnie taking down game at number one. Remember, he lost the matchup before this number five, five round five in the Swiss. He lost playing against Elliot Dragon. He is now a game up. You have to know Elliot was on a harsh mold of five in that game one, but now we both get access to their sideboards and we can have a look at how they're going about it here with our live little looking as we get split on the screen. Hats off to our production, absolutely pulling it out the bag all day today, ladies and gentlemen. If you're really enjoying this, if you're enjoying the arena content, the timeless format, the 16 players that have been brought in, I need you to show some love to the support that's putting it all on in the back end here. Because honestly, it's, it's a one-man band. We've got one person in the back here splitting it all, getting the players organized, answering all the questions, doing all the graphics, doing the rendering, putting so much effort in. We can't thank them enough because if it wasn't for Jordan working in the background, this isn't coming towards you, ladies and gentlemen. We need you to say thank you to him. It is Jordan, Tan and Grace. You've got it in one, my friend. It is, well, there's only one person that can do this and we've got him here working behind the scenes and we need to show that appreciation to him. He's absolutely putting it out of the bag. As both players are now uh, doing their sideboard, I really am interested in Elliot's sideboarding approach. Pits all 15 cards in and then sideboards 
back out to 15 cards. I think that's something you only do in paper, right? That's, that's what I thought. But he's doing it here on Arena, and it's clearly working for him being 5-0, and our undefeated player currently in this tournament. Amazing. Yeah, and it makes you, I guess when you do it this way, right, especially with the, the view and everything like that, it really it makes you really evaluate every single card rather than being like, hey, I'm going to you know bring this in, bring this out, because there's a chance, there's a world where a card like, you know, the the Croxa number two is not as good as like the claim the firstborn number three or like another card that's coming in. Like, I don't know. There's so many combinations. I, I respect it to each their own. You know, discipline is, it comes in all shapes and forms. This is one, uh, one of the few ways. As an update, um, I do believe... Nathan has won the first game paired up against Mistman. And so that's going to be pretty um, exciting to, to uh, track at some point how that's going. Um, if we get a, a rematch in the finals of the same matchup, that would be kind of cool just to see how, who can like, you know, claim the throne in that regards. Yeah, remember our top four is two Demir control decks, I guess is two Raktos breach decks. And the way the pairings were uh, lined out is that is what is both happening in both semifinals. So we get, I suppose it'd be kind of interesting if, if you know, one Raktos wins and one uh, Demir wins. We see that in the finals, and then we do find out what the most powerful deck is. Or we might end up seeing a mirror, but only time will tell. More importantly right now for Elliot, he needs to take this game down. He needs to get us to a game number three. But Arnie is going to do everything in his power to stop that. Looks like he's on a mold of six here. Just going to pick back a watery grave. Does have a, you know... Bit of a slower hand. I suppose he can deal with one thing, potentially this Deathrite Shaman, but hand disruption on the other side, it's really rough when you mulligan into that. Well, I don't even think he can deal with the Deathrite Shaman, right? Because it's going to come into play on turn one. Well, you know, you can you can do uh, the scorn, right? The stun scoring to counter it. Oh, no, you can't. Uh, yeah, he's on the draw. He's on yeah. the draw. He's on the draw. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Oh, yeah, that is coming down. <laughs> Slammed it. That was a real quick Deathrite on the battlefield. Go. Yeah, okay. I think I think Death Right Shaman also just is, is is too good of a card not to play on turn one because when your when your cards you know they cost like so when they're so cheap, it's it's just like uh, how do I explain this right? You are you are basically Death Right Shaman allows you to increase your efficiency by effectiveness by a hundred and fifty or like by fifty percent to one hundred fifty percent. This was a hard like math is not my forte as you can clearly tell, mm -hmm. but it, it, it's the ramp is just that critical here, and so uh, I th I think I also just agree. Death Right Shaman Company play turn one makes makes a lot of sense. Very solid fundamentals. But the, for Arnie there, Arnie was like, okay, I've got this fetch land. Normally that's what I'd play turn one, but obviously I don't want to play my fetch land because I'm going to give Death Right Shaman a target to turn on. Do I play my Watery Grave untapped? That's going to tell you that I have something in my hand. It could be a, a score and it could be a fatal push. If it's fatal push, I probably would have fired it off by now. So you can rule that that's not in it. Is it going to be something like a spell pierce or a brainstorm? You know what I mean? It, it was like, oh, maybe I just play the Otawara as my blue source. So I'm not giving away any extra information. And he was really toying with that in his head. And in the end, he decided to go with the Watery Grave. But now, Elliot's going to have full knowledge as his Inquisition of Kozak is going to resolve. We can take either the um, the Scorn or we can take the uh, the Ransom. We decide to take that. I, I want to say that I think that one's probably the, play, the pick I would go for because uh, it is a super powerful card and we've seen last and it just it generates so much value. It's, it's going to be two cards pretty much no matter what. If they're good cards or bad cards, Realistically, after sideboard, we don't have any bad cards left in our deck as another Inquisition is drawn. We've got the option to double uh, hand dis disruption this turn if we want to. See how we want to go about it. Yeah, I think it's also I think it's really interesting too. One of the reasons you take the Sauron's ransom here is because the way Artie's deck really pulls ahead here is by getting those two for ones and creating a wall that is really, really hard to get through. The reason it's hard to get through is because from the 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 breach side of things, right? What is your primary point of interaction with something like that it is discard and discard will only ever be as good as a one for one uh with inquisition of kozlik and, and thought sees being the items and maybe there's duress as well i don't know but that's this also still follows the same pattern right and the only way you can get through um you know all the extra cards the all the advantages that uh um arnie will get through cards like sauron's ransom is you know Two for ones, effectively, right? Cards like Underworld Breach that let you cast two spells, but those aren't resolved. So, so I, I agree with taking the Sauron's Ransom, stopping the snowball. We're going to see this game develop a little bit further. Fatal Push going to go ahead and take rid of the uh, get rid of the Death Rite Shaman here, and this is the first step I think into getting back into the game. Yeah, that was a great draw step from exactly what I needed to turn off their fight. So the gravy could start filling up. We can start trying to potentially get this dig through time online. Obviously, we know there's a fort sees, and so does Elliot know about the dig through time. So he knows the exact time he wants to be firing us off. It could be as early as this turn right now. 
Maybe I went back to his hand. Maybe he's thinking I can go land, hit Lurus in hand, Fort Seas potentially. I don't think this is a breach turn, but could be, I, you know, I've been proving wrong many times today. Maybe just getting <laughs> the Death White Shaman back in play is good enough, and that's the, the way he wants to go about it. Potentially take the scoring, but now it looks, looks like we are just going to go for the Lurus in hand play. Yeah. Sweet. I love it. I feel big brain when I managed to get a couple of lines right in a well, but that, that wasn't exactly the biggest brain line I've ever seen, let's be honest, as it looks like both players are going to go to pit Lewis in hand. And uh, this is where it's going to start to get a little bit dicey here. We need to figure out whose Lurus is going to, to perform better here. And I have to guess that with the fatal push literally in hand here for Arnie, that the uh that he's gonna be in the driver's seat here. But what's very important now, after double discard spell. Elliot knows that the coast is currently clear. You're not even holding up two mana to represent counterspell. This could be a turn where well, something like, crazy happens. Remember, this, this uh, Scorn, Scorn is going to be able to, to counter it, right? Because it does have toughness too. So we can mm. counter it for one blue mana. But Elliot knows about that. And I, I like this. Play out the, de the Dragon Race channel. Bait it out. And, you know, Arnie Discipline does not bite there. He's happy just to keep this up for Lewis. He's like, no, Lewis is more powerful. As, okay, we're going to go for a value breach by looks of it. I don't think we're comboing this turn, but again, I could be wrong. But this is going to potentially be a bit of value that we're going to see that go into the graveyard, the second underworld breach. Yeah, it's so we have three, four, five, six, seven cards in the graveyard, which means that we can actually cast Mishra's Bauble, I believe, three times here, and then generate a bunch of cards. Or you see this play in modern in, in the in the fair breach style of deck, where you just play underworld breach and you draw a bunch of cards off of Mishra's Bauble. With the fatal push now, that, that is gonna limit some options. So the reason I said three cards was because breach generally costs about three cards to exactly cost three cards to escape but every time you cast the mishra's bobble um you're putting another card into the graveyard thanks to the, the dragon's rage channeler uh so you are basically maximizing on your rate there now with the channeler gone you, you go back to the escape cost of three per spell you were trying to cast there's seven cards that three that's three plus three plus one so you get two two mishra's baubles which is still better than nothing and then even later you can use um something like Luris, or uh, or you could even cast Thoughts easier if you want to get rid of the Stern Scolding, because you do know about that. Yeah, I'm kind of looking at how this this plays out. So I guess if we get, we go Fort Seas, I think we delve three cards, then that goes to Graveyard, then we go Bauble, because we can't do a Dragon Rage Channel into Bauble, we just don't have enough cards for that uh, in the Graveyard, and we, obviously we can't end up triggering it. So I think we are limited to two cards max. Uh, Bauble is definitely in that picture. Uh, or I just got it completely wrong. I guess. Well, I guess I got it wrong. I I thought there was only. <laughs> it's, that's that okay. Mean... I, I I am in the same boat as you. <laughs> it's it's fine. Look, it's been a long day, not just for the players, but for us as well. Doing you know back to back round five rounds so far. This is round number six. We're glad that everybody's tuning in. We're glad that everybody is enjoying this awesome format in its entirety. We are building the meta, ladies and gentlemen. As we're going to start drawing some extra cards here. Playing to dust. Now that's a good card when your opponents are uh, trying to Ooh. use their graveyard. Yes, it is. Okay, now this is really interesting. So how is are you going to play out his turn here? I almost wonder if you just activate you you use the cling right now immediately to maybe draw a land, and then that'll let you put Luris into play, hold up the turn scolding. It's not ideal because you know you don't actually have proper counter spell, which is what you probably want against something like the uh, underworld breach that can be recast from the graveyard, but I mean, certain scolding is the next best thing when the way to get to underworld breach is the Luris. We're gonna we're gonna go cling into Bowmasters. Watch this. Ready? I, I can feel it. I can feel cling into Bowmasters while we get to hold up the scolding for the um the the Luris on the other side. Uh, I don't know. I don't know. Okay, okay, we'll see. I, I if, 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 oh, ah, dang. I oh, okay, but let, land is still good. I think. Um, well, yeah, it lets us get Lewis on the on on the battlefield. But what what have we got in our graveyard that we want to be bringing? Uh, Snapcaster. Okay, that answers that question nice and easy. Snapcaster in our graveyard, but like it's so scary. Uh, what can come out of this Rakdos deck, right? We know that there's a not only a two two effect. There's also a ritual in hand. Lewis is known by both players. How scared am I of that? Well, I've got the answer for it. It's um, it's going to be interesting. It's going to be real interesting because remember. Uh, Arnie is a game up, but he did lose in the Swiss in round number five. <clears throat> and it looks like the choice here is between 
uh, escaping the cling or putting the Luris into play. Arnie chooses to take a risk here for this turn, put the Luris into play, and then next turn potentially get access to something like Snapcaster Mage, maybe Flashback at Dig Through Time. I don't think I saw any copies of Counterspell or Ground and Lock in the Graveyard, so it's not exactly going to be that great. Meanwhile, you still get to hold up the stern scolding. Now, obviously, like clean to dust would be kind of cool too if you could, you know, exile something like the underworld breach. But Luris is objectively stronger um, for future turns. Clean to dust better in the moment. And oh boy, is it going to happen? I'm wondering, like Elliot's got full knowledge, right? Full information, and with a uh, snapcaster in the graveyard maybe we can't really let him untap or at least let this this lead this Luris on the battlefield and we have to try and get you know go two to for an answer ourselves uh this turn because that Luris might just get go too far you know uh uh over the over the line as we're gonna force it we're gonna cast our Luris into our this known counter spell mystic sanctuary is gonna be the land drawn for the turn that is gonna pit dig through time on top of our deck we all know how good that card is gonna be here's the counter magic now, what else can we do? I suppose it turns on Delirium. That's uh, that's pretty handy. That's an extra three points of damage that we could, uh, could do with. Are we going to go for the two effect this turn? Uh, he's pointing with it. It's highlighted. That's interesting, too. And if you do go for the tutor effect, what do you go for? Do you go for, like, you know, a removal spell to kill Delirious, for example? Or do you go for an Underworld Breach in the face of Cling to Dust and Snapcaster Mage? Well, I'm not at the caliber of these players, but in my head, that's what I'd be doing. I think I can't leave Lewis on the battlefield. I can't let this Snapcaster come back. It's unfortunate there's a dig through time on top of the deck, but it, you know, it is what it is. It is what it is. You, you know what card would actually be so sick in these mirrors? I, I am surprised that the value decks aren't playing more copies of things like Unearth. Unearth seems like one of the best cards when you look at everything else that's really good. Being able to buy back like Dragon's Rage Channeler, Orcish Bowmaster, even being able to buy back Luris too, like Snapcaster May. I mean, okay, I, I, I'm definitely going to toy around with Unearth for sure. And worst case scenario, yeah. you just cycle, right? Well, Elliot's actually got a copy in his deck. He could go Wait, and he get does? that. He actually has one copy in the main. I'm team, has- I'm team Elliot all the way then. Let's go. Choo-choo. To the moon. What did he go? What? Is that a... Uh, oh, Sol- Solgard Lantern. That's going to turn off this dig and the Lurus. Wow. Sacrificing. Okay. Sacrificing the Dragon's Rage Channeler for that. Okay. Oh, my... We know that that's, there's a dead, that's a dead card on top. The dig does nothing. Hey, yeah, Elliot's yeah. got a draw. Land is not what he wants, but he's going to play it. Land okay. again. Oh, we're just, I was almost like thinking I would sandbag that, but I suppose it picks us one step closer to hard casting this dig through time. One Are you ready for this? I, I have a feeling Arne might just walk up slowly and down smash. There's going to be Luris attacking three times. What's the draw Big there? Draw, lightning Bolt. Lightning Bolt deals oh. with, with Luris. But it will pick the extra card in the graveyard, which means we get to cast this dig through time. Uh, oh, no, no, we're, we're, one, we're one card away. Um, well, it doesn't matter. Fetch Land's going to do it. But, uh, but then when do we fire it off? Because potentially counter, uh, there could be a hand disruption on top of Elliot's deck. Discipline. Love to see it. Big draw step for Elliot. It's a 40. <laughs> oh, my word. This is so big. Okay. So now we're in response. We're going to fetch. We're going to go dig through time. We're going to pick two cards that we want and give him uh give a real bad headache here for elliot okay we're back and forth we're going we're cooking delve everything i feel like dig through time is just going to pick up like two copies of counterspell and uh elliot's just going to be like well nope nothing hit, hit. i gotta i guess i can't get around it over it under it. i gotta go through it that cast the silver uh, Sa- uh sounds ransom that's a pretty good... Which one would you like? I'm casting either of them. Don't you worry. I'm casting this ransom no matter what. I think you just got to pick uh, the the uh, Snapcaster. And yep, that's exactly what he does pick here. Finds an Orcish Bowmaster. There's some extra damage that you can go back. Do we play the Orcish Bowmaster first to get the uh, the counter on it? I don't think so. The first counter doesn't really do much. It's more the second and fourth counter that is relevant in these sort of matchups. Do we fire it off now to try and find some counter magic? Yes, we do. Let's have a look, see if we can see what four cards, uh, piles we're going to be looking at. It is a bauble, two land, and oh, uh, uh, Lauren's revealed that is going to be huge if that's the pile that is picked. Do you want two land or do you want the two unknown cards? I'm taking the two unknown cards all day long. 
I mean, I don't even think the lands are like that bad though, right? Okay, yeah, I guess, I guess, uh, okay. Yeah, there's, I mean, the lands are not that bad because you could just get back the Sauron's Ransom because you have more copies of Mystic Sanctuary. This obviously is, you know, I think it's a lose-lose situation. You could literally put the piles in any configuration. You wouldn't be happy here. And counterspell on top of the sky with uh, the Mistress Bauble. So I think, you know, not only are we going to be able to counter the next spell from Elliot, we're going to be able to add a threat to the battlefield, and then we're going to be able to draw a bunch of cards. The Lightning Bolt's the card drawn. Unfortunately, that's not going to be enough. We might even just let it resolve, though. Like, we still got a threat on the battlefield. We're still doing a point of damage. I'll be interested if we're, we're going... Yeah, we're letting this happen. And Man, they're so disciplined, these players. I'm not this disciplined. I'm like, no, I need to win straight away. Here comes a, a brainstorm off the top. When you're in like a, a kind of a top deck battle with your opponent, this is exactly the card you want to be drawing. But realistically, I've got Counter Magic plus draw three. That is going to be hard to not just snap off now. Yeah, I think the, the best card here that Ellie could possibly draw is Kroxa. I think that card might be... Just barely good enough. Actually, it might not even um, because no, we don't have enough man to get it back. It's gonna yeah, this is game. We're gonna be locking this up, right? So we we counter this with the it's going nice. That can go to the graveyard. Don't worry about it. We're gonna attack for another point of damage. We're just two damage short of closing this game up. But we get to put counter spell back on top of our deck. Oh, it's going or dig through time back on top of our deck. Yeah, we're just generating so much value here, and I think Arnie is moments away from. Uh, you know, getting back that loss, he's, he's, that was a fluke in the Swiss. I, I saved my, my A game for the top four, Elliot, but let's not say anything. Elliot, undefeated in the, our Swiss. Super great performance. And this happens when you get to top fours, right? You know, it, it, is, it is how the cards play out. It, it's going to be hard no matter what. But getting in this caliber of player, in this tournament, in this brand new format where no one's, there's no meta, we're making the meta as we go along. Getting to the top four is such a great achievement. But all the players involved, it's absolutely massively paid. And well done to Arnie, because he is he has piloted this perfectly. Yeah, it, it kind of feels like, you know, in Swiss, Arnie, Arnie, uh, you know, okay, he lost. And then he was like, oh, top four, we're running it back. And then he just takes off his training weights. And they just, like, smash into the ground because they're, like, 100 pounds each or something like that. And he's just like, all right, crack my neck muscles and neck muscles, and, I, and I'm good to go. You know what I'm saying? Wait, what did I just? Okay. Yeah, but you get the idea, right? Like, Rock Lee, that's what I'm thinking of. Yeah. He was digging and he was digging. He found the Orcus Master to get the lethal on that turn and not give Elliot another one. So congratulations to Arnie. He is going through to our finals. But do we have a backup feature match? Do we have the ever semis? Or do we have the conclusion of it? All right. We will have the backup match, it sounds like, in just a second or two. But I, I, I have to wonder, I mean, as, I, as, as far as I can tell, um, we might even have the same matchup play again. Uh, the other side of the bracket does feature Rakdos Breach against uh, Demir Control, this time piloted by Nathan Stoyer on Rakdos Breach and Mistmin on uh, on Blue-Black Control. And as far as I can tell, now correct me if I'm wrong, this Blue-Black deck actually was a product of of Mistman, right? Like Mistman is the creator of this deck. I think I think so. Like if we had to put it down to it, I'd have to ask Arnie where he got he actually got the uh, deck list from. But Mistman, I know is is a huge arena player. Only plays arena. Has never played a game of Paper Magic in his life. He is a so and so through uh, arena player. Is played at the Mythic Championship level. He's a obviously a huge streamer, content creator, deck brewer, and we're seeing why he's if he's managed to come out of this and he's managed to pit. Uh, potentially at least one copy into the final. That in itself is saying, I am a master deck builder. I have managed to break this format already at this early stage against this caliber of players, 16, a member of some of the best that play the game today. And uh, if we manage to get two copies into that, into the finals, then, you know, hats off. Go, go over, go get your, your, your Amazon Primes out. Go get the sub over to uh, Miss Min's channel for hats off of breaking the format. We could see an upset in that with, of course, Nathan Stoyer. I don't need. What more can you say about Nathan these days? He's done everything. Literally, he's done everything. He's got a world championships to his name. Whoa, he's whoa, whoa! whoa. I can't title. confirm or deny that Nathan Stoyer has won his local eponym. Can you? 
Um, that is, I don't even think he goes to his local Apple Air, but you know, that's the caliber when you don't need to go. That's that's, that's where I think he's at. He's uh huh. Awesome. Okay, I'm taking <laughs> notes, taking notes here. But yeah, this this game is uh, looking kind of interesting here. We just saw Stone of Eric, uh, you know, exile graveyards, which means the Dragon's Race channel is no longer on the board here. Stitcher Supplier is still in play. The way this game is shaping up, it seems like we might be in for the long haul for the finals because I'm gonna be honest with you, Miss Min's hand looks very very good yeah he's got he's got a bit of everything he's got i can get my spells back from a graveyard wants to get in there i've got my orcish bow masters i've got my counter spells i've got my two effects and i've also got my lewis re there ready to go i do want to a big shout out to uh, elliot dragon thank you for the raid my friend an amazing performance today congratulations and i've got confirmation from chat and obviously chat is never wrong that arnie did get his deck list from missman he just made a few changes to it they're not the exact same 75 but dang they are close and both picking up amazing performances here so yeah hats off again to elliot for you know going undefeated in our swiss if you haven't hit that follow button ladies and gentlemen he is in the chat right now click the follow go follow him go show him the support for picking up absolutely amazing games for us all here to watch and enjoy lewis to hand here for our uh, I, I say former world champion but you told me that's not something i should be saying it's not nice to say former world champion i mean it's, it's it's like you know you never say mr former president to you know like Obama, right? You say Mr. President, and like it's just like it is what it is. I what, that, that's neither here nor there, though. Like, I mean, he is a world champion in his right. The title, he probably has that trophy, the, the super cool trophy, um, that is honestly just about as big as he is. Uh, and, and regardless, <laughs> he is somebody that I would never want to play against in in uh any any sort of setting because he's just such a stone cold killer, you know. Oh, yeah, he, he, and he's, he's showing why, man. I mean, yet again, in another top bracket of another big event, but this time in a brand new format of Timeless. We're seeing Ragavan, uh, you know, second copy in Hammonds that we're playing, we're kind of okay to dash this, but we're also seeing probably the reason why Ragavan isn't running rampant as much as we're going to see a Orcish Bowmaster come down here, do the point of damage and add a little bit more pressure here against the, I'm going to say, a world champion, Nathan Stoyer. Nice. I, I like that. It's got a nice, it's got the it's nice pizzazz. It's got the riz in it. You know what I mean? Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's, I get it. It's pretty it. cool. It's pretty it. cool. We're cooking. We're cooking. You know what I mean? It's not just the players getting better here. It's also us getting better. <laughs> <laughs> All right, so here's another copy of Ragavan. That's going to get drowned in the locks here. And I think I like this. Just spend your mana, trade your spells. You've got Luris, and you're kind of in a position, especially with something like this Demonic Tutor, to to really pull out ahead here. Your opponent only has Luris in their hand, and you've got that covered. So I think at this point, we go back to the, the, um, the same discussion that I was talking about earlier in the matchup with Arne and uh, Elliot, which is uh, now I think Mistman should just try to generate... Draw as many cards as possible and and block Nathan out of any sort of path to coming back into this game. Already it's kind of close and Nathan might have a shot here. Like it has to kind of be, I don't know, it has to be something like thought sees into play Luris and then to start like like buying back cards, but you don't even have that much mana. So a really, really tough position actually. Having a little look for his deck, obviously, Demonic Tutor is one of the uh, restricted cards in the Timeless format. Only allowed to play one copy of that. This format, every card is unlocked, but we do have a few restrictions when it comes to it. And obviously, uh, it's showing why. Two mana, go find any card in your deck. And you don't even reveal it. You just put it in your hand. You keep your opponent guessing. Yeah, and it looks like uh, Mispin has gotten the perfect card, which is... Um, it Archmage is Arch, Charm. Ar Archmage, is, Ar yeah, Archmage is Charm. Do you say Archmage or Archmage? Uh, I say Archmage Charm, but that basically what it is, is it's lethal. We're going to attack for four, and then we're going to let Nathan draw two cards. And when he draws those two, those two cards, he's going to take four points of damage, and that is going to be the game. And we're going to have two Demir control decks in the finals, Anu. This is That's madness. Mad for, for a control mage like me, this, this is the greatest moment, basically. Like, I don't even have to struggle to come up with it. Here's the thing, too, right? With the metagame not being, like, fully fleshed out and fully diverse, your task as a control mage becomes exponentially harder because you don't know what you're trying to control. And Mistman has put in the reps and says, I identified this, this, and this as pillars of the format, and I'm going to take it down with this specific build. You see he's in the uh, in the finals here. Arnie's playing a copy of his deck in the finals, in the mirror. It, this is, I mean, 
buckle up because it's going to be a long one. But I mean, it, it, this is insane. I think this is a fantastic showing for the deck here. Fantastic showing for the power of cards like Orcish Bowmasters and Luris in in a power a powerful format like Timeless. And like if I had a hat on, I'll take my hat. I'll take my headphones off for this man. You know, what I mean, you've managed to build a deck that is phenomenal. I'm gonna. I'm literally. I'm gonna have to quote that tweet of me messaging him going how does your deck win like surely it's not just the mortgage bow masters i genuinely messaged him that when we were looking over the decks yesterday and he puts it back going, no no it, it's all bow master and lewis that's, that's how i win I was like, uh, like how, how could you not know that right no like, well, that, like that surely that's not going to perform well well what little did i know as two of them and now in the finals start getting those polluted deltas with those wild cards those gentlemen that is going to be the most powerful fetch land in timeless by the time we finish today we're setting up our uh uh main well i say our main feature match our only feature match we've got 16 players we've weirded it down to the final two there can only be one this is highlander just like highlander i was say the highlander's actual format isn't it but <laughs> it, it's fine are we gonna have a short break with a little bit of wordle before we come back to find out? we are having wordle chat wordle, this is wordle. your final shot at wordle and then we're going to go to the finals. So make sure you enjoy it. Make sure you guess it right. Because this is the last one. Well, maybe if you're good, maybe we'll give you two. So we'll be back real shortly. Stick around. We'll see you shortly. 